Hi everyone, Pharma Questions here. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the tetracycline antibiotic class and here we have a few examples of tetracyclines. So tetracyclines are used for a number of different indications and infections such as chlamydia, rosacea, H. pylori, rickettsia, mycoplasma and acne. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of action of this antibiotic class and see how it works. So tetracyclines are bacteriostatic antibiotics, meaning they work by stopping the bacteria from multiplying or slowing the growth of the bacteria. And they do this by inhibiting bacterial protein synthesis through two specific mechanisms, which we'll take a look at now. So prokaryotic cells contain two types of ribosomal units that is the 30s and the 50s units tetracyclines bind to the 30s bacterial ribosomal subunit and they block trna from binding to its aseptic site and trna is a special kind of rna molecule and its job is to match the mrna codon with the amino acid it codes for so when this is inhibited, proteins can obviously no longer be formed, thus affecting how the bacteria multiplies or replicates. And the other mechanism of action is that tetracyclines also affect the 50S bacterial ribosomal subunit and they bind to this subunit and through this they alter the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria causing the intracellular components to leak out. Now let's take a look at how tetracyclines are taken. So tetracyclines are taken on an empty stomach. This is one hour before food or two hours after food. And this is because tetracyclines have a chelation type of interaction with milk. They bind to the calcium within milk and this causes reduced absorption. So the antibiotics are no longer effective. However, this is not true for all tetracyclines and some are exempt from this rule. And these are doxycycline, limecycline and minocycline and this can be remembered by the mnemonic does like milk. Now let's take a look at three important contraindications of tetracyclines. The first being that children under 12 years of age should not be given tetracyclines and this is because the antibiotic can deposit in growing bones and teeth by binding to the calcium and this leads to teeth discoloration and defects. The second contraindication is that tetracyclines should not be given to pregnant women as they can have an effect on the fetal skeletal development, especially in the first trimester. In the second trimester, teeth discoloration may be seen and in the third trimester, cases of maternal hepatotoxicity have been reported. And the last contraindication is that tetracyclines should not be given to breastfeeding women. Now let's take a look at some cautions of tetracyclines. Myasthenia gravis is a chronic autoimmune disorder in which antibodies destroy the communication between nerves and muscles, resulting in weakness of the skeletal muscles. Tetracyclines should be used with caution in people with myasthenia gravis as they can increase muscle weakness. Now let's take a look at another caution. So, systemic lupus erythematosus is another autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks its own tissues, 
causing widespread inflammation and tissue damage in the affected organs. It can affect the joints, the skin, the brain, lungs, amongst other organs. And tetracyclines should be used in caution with um, in people with um, systemic lupus erythematosus as they can exacerbate the disease. Now let's take a look at some side effects. So one of the most important side effects of tetracyclines is headaches and visual disturbances and this is because these effects indicate towards intracranial hypertension and if these effects occur um, in someone who's taking tetracyclines then treatment is usually discontinued. Some other side effects include angioedema, skin reactions, decreased appetite, nausea, diarrhea and photosensitivity reactions. So we'll now be taking a look at some visual examples of tetracyclines and the effects they can cause. So first up we have menocycline and menocycline turns black when it's oxidized and this can produce a discoloration of the skin, the nails, the conjunctiva, the teeth, the bones and the thyroid gland as you can see from the images. This pigmentation can often be irreversible in nature which um, I would imagine to be quite damaging as um, you can see from the images. So the next two drugs we'll take a look at are demiclocycline and doxycycline and although the tetracycline class in general can cause photosensitivity reactions these two drugs in particular are associated with an increased risk so patients are generally advised to avoid exposure to sunlight or sun lamps as effects shown in the images can occur and that concludes this video um, thank you for watching and if you learned something new today please leave a like or subscribe for future content